Hey guys, it's AJ from Design the Everything. Today we are going to do a short tutorial on how to do photorealistic renders within Fusion 360. So why do you need to do a photorealistic render? A photorealistic render can really go a long way in making a digital design feel like a real design and feel like a thing that can actually be made. If you are presenting a design to your boss or to a client, having a professional looking render can really go a long way in making the thing that you've designed look like it's worth more or will work better or is more valuable. This means that a good render can actually raise the value of your work. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do the rendering in Fusion 360. I've already put together a design. This design was one I did for a workbench that I, I actually just built, it's already done. Um, for my my new lathe. Now I have just a very cheap woodworking lathe, not a, a metal one like this. I just grabbed this model off of GrabCAD, uh, but it'll let me show you how to do the rendering process. To start off, we need to go into the render mode. So go up here and click on this uh, change workspace button and then go down to render and that'll load. All right, so now we're in the render environment. So we need to start off by assigning materials to all of these different parts here. So we're gonna go up here and click appearances or the hotkey for that is A. And that opens up this box that we need to drop down here. You can do uh, materials or, or appearances onto a face or the whole component. Generally, I do most things by components, but there's times where like you're painting three sides of a box or something that you wanna do faces. So let's go find materials down here. Uh, you can find there's different kinds of wood which um, this is all designed to be made out of two by four. So let's see if we can find some pine. Look at that, 3D pine unfinished. So I need to download that. And once I do that, I can just drag it onto my pieces. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and make all of these pieces pine. Cool, now that that's all pine, let's go ahead and start filling in the different colors on this lathe here. So I'm pretty sure all those colors will work. Now I get to do the actual render. So I'm gonna close this appearance thing here. I'm going to right click and hit okay. And that uh, finalizes all those appearances. And now let's go ahead and set up our scene. So there's a couple things you can do here. You can choose just a black uh, or a, a gray background here, or you can actually choose an environment. So let's choose something exciting. And this will change both your lighting and how it looks. So let's try Skylight, why not? I'm gonna hit download and drag that in. And then we can actually change that background to our environment. Um, and you can turn on things like reflections and you can change how much it reflects, um, different artifacts of the, uh, the camera itself. You can save these as defaults and you can uh, turn that or make them def the defaults for future. I actually don't like the Skylight, this is kind of boring. Um, why not do it in a field? Let's go for a field. And I'm pretty sure you can actually change these background colors to be whatever you want. So you can change it. Let's say, you know, this was, I if I felt like it, I could go take pictures of the room I was gonna put this in and actually model this inside the room, which could be valuable to you. Uh, all of my other settings should be fine. Uh, there probably shouldn't be reflections on a, on a grassy field, so I'm gonna turn that off. I do want a perspective, and we'll go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and put my logo on this just for fun. So I'm gonna go up here and hit decal, select face. I'm gonna choose the front plane here, select image. I'm gonna go find my logo. We'll do the uh, simple version. Then we just need to <laughs> scale it to the right size and orient it. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And now my work logo's on the workbench. Now this texture map controls button lets you change like the direction of the wood grain. Um, I've never felt a need to do that. You can see here, like it just changed the direction there. You might run across the time to use that, but I never have. All right, let's go ahead and render this. 
So go ahead and render this. You get the view that you want to have, and you can zoom in and out, look around just like normal. So let's go ahead and just about fill the screen. Maybe look on it more straight on, hit the render button. And then you can change everything from the file format to the uh, resolution here. Um, and you can render it locally or in the cloud and change the render quality. I just about have always done local render. Um, it actually comes out faster for me than uh, rendering in the cloud. You can turn on setting, advanced settings, or you can you can hit this advanced setting radial switch here and change your render quality. It's might as well go full quality, though this will take longer. If you see up here where it says web, mobile, print, video, these are default resolutions. So you can hit video, for example, and you can go 1080p, 480p, 720, and choose one of those. Let's go 1080p. Uh, or you can hit custom here and go back to where you can set everything manually. But again, do this for video, and I'm gonna hit render. Now this might take a little while. I, said in the corner here, I'm not sure if you can see it behind my head, that the render was started. Now this bar popped up down here and you can click on the, well, you can see, first of all, in the green there, that is the loading bar. The cloud with an X through it means it's not in the cloud, it's local. It's using my computer's resources. And we can click on that and open this bar here and we can see its progress. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for that to finish. All right, so our render is done and it looks pretty good. We can do a couple of different things here. Um, probably the one you want the most to do is download it. So you can go ahead and save that to your desktop or wherever. And that way you can email it to your client or somehow show them. Because remember, Fusion 360 is in the cloud. So right now this is in the cloud until you download it. You can also delete it here. And using this, you can share it and see some of the, the information. So if you wanna go back and recreate a render and just tweak some things, you can look at um, all of these here. Notice it took 18 minutes to render, which isn't too bad. And you can also do it as a turntable. So if we do this, um, you'll actually be able to see it move. So let's go ahead and render, the, uh, render it as a turntable. Um, notice that you cannot choose to render a turntable on your computer, or you can't render it locally. I assume because it'll take way too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit render, and it thinks it'll take 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, and then you can see it rendering down here. Now one thing to notice, it didn't show up very well before, um, just because the render was farther away. There is actually a lot of texture on these. So this was the, the this was here was cast iron this was like a brush stainless or something like that this is a powder coat which i guess you can't see the texture on that very well um but that is different as compared to these which are polished oops so there you go you can see a couple of different textures here and if we do a render uh we'll just do a quicker one this time you'll be able to see when that render is done they'll like these different textures come through. So now you see that the render is done and you can actually rotate all the way around, which again, this would be, you know, super useful for a presentation to a client or, you know, internally within your business. It really captures, you know, all of the detail. You can tell exactly what that looks like. Again, you can download that um, and you can do it as a video or with an HTML. So let's just save it as a video and save and close that now i render over here is done too and you can see that you know all of this detail here shows up as well so if you are doing something small and you have to be closer in you can you know see is the the little sand marks from the cast iron here or the brush strokes on the uh brush steel here's a picture of what the finished bench looks like you can tell I've already done a project on there. I went ahead and made, this was my first turning project ever, and it's just a, uh, a woodworker's mallet, um, just out of scrap one. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button so you can see all my other videos as they come out. If you have any requests for a, another tutorial or video, please leave that in the comment section below. Or if you have a question about this video, again, comments below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.